These gluten-free, honey thyme and lemon mini syrup cakes are sweet, delicate and delicious. Best served with a dollop of yogurt. Welcome to Recipes by Karina, where I share with you how to make simple and delicious recipes. Make sure to subscribe for a new video each week. I was inspired to make these cakes from this beautiful thyme and honey candle from the Remarkable Candle Company here in central Otago of New Zealand. They have such beautiful scents, I'll have the link in the description box below if you want any for yourself. To make these mini cakes, in a medium sized mixing bowl or in the bowl of your stand mixer, add half a cup or 60 grams of icing sugar or powdered sugar. These are both the same ingredient, just different names depending on where you live in the world. To the icing sugar, you'll need a cup, two sticks or around 225 grams of room temperature butter. We are going to be creaming the butter and sugar together here, so make sure your butter is at room temperature, as if it's straight out of the fridge you'll have such a hard time trying to mix it. If you would like the full recipe for these thyme, honey and lemon mini syrup cakes, it will be on my website, as well as the full measurements listed in the description box below. I'll also have a link to my playlist of all my other gluten-free recipes if that is something you're interested in. Once you've creamed your butter and sugar together, for about 3-4 to four minutes or so, it should be paler in colour and light and fluffy in texture. Next we're going to add the eggs. You'll need 4 medium sized, good quality eggs and again make sure these are at room temperature. Just remove them from the fridge about an hour or so before you start baking. Crack the eggs into the bowl one at a time and beat well with your mixer in between each addition. We're trying to add a good amount of air into the eggs, which in turn will result in a lighter and fluffier cake. Adding the eggs too fast here, or adding cold eggs, can cause your butter to curdle. All is not lost if it does curdle, it'll come back together once we add the dry ingredients, but you won't be able to get near as much air into the batter. Just make sure to go as slow as possible with the eggs and give them a really good mix until they are fully incorporated into the batter. Let me know in the description box below if you are going to try this recipe. It's a really nice fresh tasting cake which pairs perfectly with a dollop of yogurt for some tang. The syrup gives it such an interesting texture and flavour let me just say that dry is the last thing you would ever use to describe this cake. I'm baking them in mini loaf tins, but it can also be baked as one large cake, round or square, or even in a cupcake tin. To give these cakes a little more flavour and a small amount more sweetness, we're adding honey. The cake batter isn't actually too sweet or flavourful, as most of that will come from the syrup we pour over later. If you're not a fan of honey, you can substitute it with equal amounts of sugar. Add about a quarter of a cup, whatever kind you have on hand or whatever kind you would like to use into the bowl, along with a small amount of vanilla essence and give it a good mix until everything is fully combined. Lastly, we just need to get our dry ingredients together. In a small bowl, measure out a cup of ground almonds or almond meal. You can substitute this with another kind of ground nut, but I think almonds give it the best flavour and texture, but are not at all overpowering. To the almonds, we'll also need a cup of fine semolina, not coarse. This cake is gluten free, as long as you are using a gluten free baking powder. There's no way you'll ever miss fire here, as it has such a great flavour and texture. So if you're ever on the lookout for gluten-free baking recipes, this is a great one to keep on hand. To the almonds and semolina, add a pinch of salt, about half a teaspoon's worth, and two teaspoons of baking powder to help these cakes rise. Use a whisk and give the ingredients a good mix until they are well combined. 
The final ingredient we'll need for the cake batter is some lemon zest. You'll need all of the zest from a medium sized lemon. Zest it straight into the bowl with the dry ingredients and give it another quick mix. Pour the bowl of dry ingredients into the bowl with the wet ingredients. Swap to a wooden spoon here and give the cake batter a good mix together until you no longer see any dry ingredients. Divide the batter into a greased mini loaf, cupcake or cake tin. I'm only using 6 of my spaces so each of the loaves are a decent size. If you are using a cupcake tin you should get about 10 or so cupcakes out of this batter. Place the mini loaves into a 180 degree Celsius or 350 degree Fahrenheit oven for 20 to 25 minutes or until the loaves are golden brown and spring back when pressed. If you are using a cake tin, you may need closer to 40 minutes baking time. While the mini cakes are baking, we can get started on making the syrup we will pour over the cakes. In a small saucepan, we're going to measure out the sugar. You'll need half a cup or 100 grams. Pour this straight into the saucepan along with two tablespoons of honey. The honey flavour will be much stronger here than it is in the cake, so if you're not a fan, it can be left out completely. To the sugar and honey, add a lemon peel, as well as a few sprigs of thyme. No need to cut these up, as the flavour will infuse into the syrup. Finally, pour over half a cup of cold water. Place the saucepan over medium to low heat, give it a mix and simmer the syrup together for about 10 to 15 minutes. During this, the flavour from the lemon peel and thyme will infuse and the sugar and honey will dissolve, creating this beautiful syrup. When the cakes have finished baking, pull them out of the oven and using a toothpick or skewer, you want to pierce many holes in the top of each cake. This will allow the syrup to absorb better. Pour the syrup over each cake and place the pan back into the oven for another 10 minutes for the cakes to absorb all of the syrup. These are best served at room temperature with a dollop of yogurt on the side. Let me know if you're going to try this recipe. Thank you for watching and I will see you in my next video.